Welcome back. Welcome back. We got another off season video. We're coming up to the end of these. We got a special guest again. We got Jelani. Obviously, we got Slim. Finn is out today, but he will be back soon enough. So if you want to see more of Finn, go check out some other videos. But we're talking about the Lakers today. We thought we'd bring Jelani back on for Laker Nation, baby. But yeah, I mean, a lot of moves made by the Lakers this offseason. Re signed, I think, five guys from last year, added five new guys. I mean, first, Jelani, let's get your thoughts on it first, and then we'll go to Slim. So, obviously, keeping the core was a major, major part. They kept D'Angelo. They kept Jared. They kept Austin. And, you know, they obviously got LeBron and AD. But the pieces that they added is just – it's insane. My my personal favorite this offseason, I've been a Cam Reddish fan since I was 16. Like, watching him on the, watching him on the circuit, like, he's, he's really a bucket. I remember this one interview he had. He had 52 points. Anthony Edwards was talking about this. He was like, who's the toughest cat you ever had to guard? It got to be that dude, Cameron. He's like, bro, he don't he don't even remember this. But he scored 50 points again. He had 52. And he didn't even know he had 52. So he, he's a, he's just a bucket regardless. So that's, that's my personal favorite. But you know what I'm saying? Also, also just keeping uh, – I think the core, keeping the core together was mainly more important than really them adding pieces because. Yeah, for sure. Think about it. If you really think about it, Austin Reeves was in his what, second, third season. And he put up like 18 and a half points. Then you got AD injury prone self. Hopefully he can figure something out. But Braun is Braun. Braun is always going to do what he does. He's going to be 38, but like the last two seasons. He'll be 40. He's He'll be bro, 40 in December. Somebody be 40? Yeah, I think. Or maybe 30 I'm pretty sure it's 40. Like that. That's crazy. Braun is like, bro, different. He's old, but he's still getting to it, bro. He's still getting to it, so. For sure. Yeah. And so, uh, so for me, I was going to say the same thing. You know, Cam got drafted to the A-Town. You know what I'm saying? Got to see him play for the Hawks just a little bit. Uh, I'm not even going to. This Nate McMillan, but to all my Hawks fans, to all the people of TOT who have been here from the start, y'all know how I feel. Y'all know where we headed. So, ah, uh, ah. Uh. But anyways, <laughs> I'm so excited to see Cam Reddish play. I believe that Darvin Ham is really going to give him the opportunity to to shine, spread his wings, and show the people what he's capable of. You know what I'm saying? I think that he's a a magnificent wing player, very smooth, PG esque, if you will. And um, I think the Lakers have a, a even greater opportunity than what they had last year. And I'd like to see them run it back, you know, with Denver, assuming that Denver can make it back to the championship. But um, I love I love the young stars that they got that are, you know, on the way up. You know, we love the grind. You know, shout out to Jelani. You know what I'm saying? We pay attention to, to these young cats who put in this work. Uh, yeah. So I love Max Christie. Max Christie is a dog. And uh, hopefully – I like to see uh, Scotty Pippen Jr. really, you know, get get on the court, you know, maybe in a backup situation, maybe even third string. But I think that he has a lot of potential. Uh, I like the cat that they drafted, Jalen Hood Chafino. I think he's tough. I think he he reminds me of a little little bit, kind of like Paolo, the way that he is poised and is in control of his moves while he's playing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And shout out to Austin Reeves playing for Team USA. I think the Lakers have an absolute squad this season, and they are going to be tough and a force to reckon with. Yeah, no, I think, one, obviously you have your two main guys in LeBron and AD. But, I mean, as LeBron gets older, he's probably not going to be playing 50 or 70 games anymore. He'll probably be in that 60 to 70 range, maybe. Yeah. Um, so, one, you need to have bench depth. And they didn't have much of that until the trade deadline last year. Then now you have a backup for AD in Christian Wood, who obviously very different play styles, but offensively Christian Wood can kind of kind of replicate what AD can do, but enough to win you some games. And if AD has to miss time, which I don't knock on wood, he probably will at some point. But then you guys, you got guys like Jared Vanderbilt, who's on a four-year, $84 million deal that just got signed, I think, yesterday or today. Christian Wood's on a cheap deal. Um, Reeves' deal is amazing for the quality of player he is. Um, then you add guys like Gabe Vincent, who just was in the finals. Like, that veteran leadership. Obviously, you have LeBron. Oh, my Lord. 
That's a that's another big piece right there. Gabe Vincent is going to be a crazy piece for them. Because if you think about it, that's, two years ago, that's what they that's what they traded for Wesley Matthews for. They needed a spot up shooter, and to be honest with you, Gabe Vincent is a way better spot up shooter than um. Shoot, what's his name again? He's a way better spot up shooter than um. Than on the who's on the Lakers? Yeah, bro. He was. I um, forgot who was it. Who was their spot up shooter last year? Last year, um. I, I'm blanking too. I don't know why my mind went to Trevor Ariza, but that was just they, totally they off. Just or did they? I don't even think they had a, a really a catch and shoot guy. Yeah, they didn't have many options. Like that's yeah. why the trade deadline was so elite because you won, you got another ball handler in D'Lo, where it didn't have to constantly be in LeBron's hands. Then when LeBron went out, you got to see Reeves kind of take the ball and split 50 50 with D'Lo. Now yeah. you have three guys that can take you off the dribble and create for other people. It's so much harder to guard if you do that. And then also now you have shooting round. Rui Hachimura was the resurgence in the playoffs. He's going to be really, really good. Um, and obviously AD's roller coaster, you know, but if he plays consistently, like he's a top five player in the NBA. If he bro, plays any bro, when he plays consistently, he's top three, bro. Like when when like AD that. is playing his great, when AD's playing his basketball, he's top three. And I, I won't even argue about it with anybody. I won't even argue. When he's playing his his brand of basketball and he's not injured, he's playing 100%, he's top three in the league. I think he's better than Joel Embiid at his healthiest. I, I don't know if I can put him over Embiid right now just because mm. he's too up and down. Like, uh, I, mean, I, I want to agree with you. Here, here's why I want to agree with you. Here's why I want to agree with you because – I know what I'm going to get out of Joel Embiid, right? I'm going to get 28, 8, and 10 maybe, right? AD is just like – it's really questionable. It's really questionable. Are you getting, are even you getting if, 40 even if or are you getting healthy. 12? Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, even if he's healthy, like, sometimes he'll be passive. Like, he'll have yeah. a post-up option and he'll swing it to weak side corner. Or he'll, he'll, have, the, he'll have a back down and he'll go take a – a floater when he could just pump fake and dunk it. Like he needs to take more out of Giannis's book. You're yeah. seven foot, gang. Please back this dude down and dunk the ball on his head. Like you're Anthony Davis. Please remember that. <laughs> yeah. And I think once I think I don't think it really actually I was gonna say it probably doesn't matter to him for like the awards now with the 65 games rule. But yeah. like Come playoff time, you want him to be healthy. That's first and foremost because I think the Lakers have the opportunity to compete with the best of them, if not be the best of them. I legitimately really do think the Lakers can win, barring health to LeBron and AD. But, like, guys are going to miss games at certain points throughout the season, and you have the depth now to where you can replace that. That's not something that they had for the first half of that season last year before the trade deadline. Like, you didn't have a guy that can go give you 20 in Austin Reeves. Well, you did, but, like, he wasn't doing it. Then yeah. you had Rui. Now you have Gabe Vincent, who can definitely give you spark shooting and everything like that. And Christian Wood's going to give you 18 on any given night just because he's going to shoot the ball 25 times. But, like... And that just that just opens up the driving lanes that much more because, to be honest with you, last season, anytime you got in a driving lane, the help side was crazy because who are you closing out strong to? Like the guys weren't really shooting. The guys weren't really shooting that well last season. They didn't really have a, a consistent spot up shooter. Maybe Austin Reeves. Maybe maybe Dennis Shooter. But even Dennis Shooter during the Denver finals, during the Denver, um, during the Denver uh playoffs, he wasn't even there. Like he really wasn't even there. I guess he he probably didn't get a lot of touches. Him and D'Angelo kind of got into it a little bit, but still like. You gotta if you're if you're playing catch and shoot or you're playing off ball as a guard, you gotta be able to catch and shoot and knock it down, bro. Especially when you got LeBron James and Anthony Davis drawing your man into crazy help side. You've got at least a good second and a half to shoot it, bro. Yeah. Knock it down. <laughs> like, dude, and I'm I know you guys mentioned Cam Reddish earlier, but I kind of want to swing back to it just because one. I wanted the Cavs to draft Cam Reddish coming out of the draft back in the day. I thought he was just like super. He's just like one of those guys that's just like ultimate tough. Like he's just like he's just buckets. And Elite. I think he's kind of had bad situations. And I think having a decreased role than what everyone kind of wants him to do is basically just be a three and D guy. Like people will think that's like a bad thing. That's yeah. in, that's a great thing. Look at Max Struess, who's not even a plus defender, just got $64 million this offseason. We got guys like George Yang who doesn't play any defense who got signed 27 mil. 
Like yeah. that's a, like those are valuable, valuable guys. If you can consistently knock down threes, and if you do it in LA, you could do it anywhere. So I'm ex- excited. And to yeah, I'm um, he's he's definitely a good knockdown guy. But I like I like Slim said. I think Darvin Ham's gonna gonna let him off the leash. Like he's gonna he's gonna let him play his brand of basketball. I don't think he's. I think he's seen it enough when he went to New York and. He he was hooping like he had a career high game where he had like twenty eight or twenty nine and he was hooping so he's just got to be in that situation where he gets those looks where he gets those touches and gets the ball in his hands and when he does just know oh, it's going everybody's gonna be saying Cam fam he's been saying that I had that in my body I'm telling you I was a Cam ready fan I still am Cam you my guy bro if you seen this you my guy okay Cam fam is his hashtag he is that guy when he's when he's getting to it. He's getting to it. If you see one go in, it's over with. I'm saying, bro, he's he's different. I think I think that, and then part of part of the the problem with last season, I don't want to blame it on the guys because they were doing their best, but you had a lot of ball dominant players, and and playing Russ how you did, you know, was was difficult for the team to try and develop that chemistry that you needed. You just had a lot of on ball players that, you know, when in reality you needed somebody who could really space the floor in the way that they did. And that's why we see Braun does what he does. And then when he takes over, he can, but when AD was healthy for like that, that week or two weeks, AD was going stupid, crazy. You know what I'm saying? He was going wild. He was going wild. I think this season, I think because after the trade deadline, we watched y'all flip the script, you know, see Denver in the second round of the playoffs. I think that Darvin Ham is really going to know how that chemistry, how to implement that chemistry immediately, you know, starting off with this season. So in regards to Cam, Max Christie, uh, Christian Wood, especially Rui Hachimura is showing you the performance and and how, how well he is. I think that, you know, these guys already got it going. So by training camp, preseason, by the time the regular season starts, watch out for the Lakers. I think that they may be number two, arguably number one or number three in the West. But right there specifically, those those guys are going to take off. I got them at two. I got them at two. And they're my team, but I just got you, – you can't be, like, delusional. You got to be yeah. realistic. <laughs> yeah. I got them at two, and they're right behind the Suns. Yeah. Um, one last thing before we go to the win to over under Jelani. I don't know if you've ever seen, but we, at the end we do over under win totals based on the betting odds. But um, I know it's a long time away, but come playoff time, I think one of the things that's super, super important is being able to be super athletic, but also with size. And if you look yeah. da- up and down this Lakers roster, we have AD who's seven foot, Christian Wood who's 6'10", LeBron who's 6'10", or 6'9". You have Rui Hachimura who's 6'9". Like you have a lot of s- Jared Vanderbilt who's 6'7". And- can guard centers and guards like i just think that having that kind of size and versatility is going to be huge for them down the stretch especially having to go up against the Jokic in the playoffs for sure and it just makes it like having having the guys with that length that can switch off one through five it just makes it it just makes it that much worse for the defense it just makes it that i mean that much worse for the offense because if you if you're if you're kyle lowry or or Peyton Pritchard, and you see Jared Vanderbilt switch out on you. You think you got an advantage, but he can move just as quick as you, and he's got the length to make up for whatever whatever mistake he's made. If you be if you get by him, he's probably gonna get it off the glass, most likely. Yeah. He's just quick like that, and he's got the length to make up for any mistakes he makes. For sure. Yeah. What's the and line? Then, all right. The last segment we do on the show is over under win totals. Normally, we're kind of all over the place between me, Finn, and Slim. But today, the Lakers projected win totals at 52 and a half. So do you think they're getting more? Ooh, I like that. I like that. These lines are very good, to be fair. I'll go more. I'll go more. I had him at 54. I had him at 54. So I'm going to go more. Okay. That's nice. When when I first thought, I'm like 50, you know, and then or 50, 50 something. And then... I was thinking, like, I think the first number that popped in my head was, like, 57. I'm like, wait, that may be too crazy. Maybe 49, <laughs> something like that. But if it's at 52, I can I can definitely see over. Okay. I don't want to be that guy, but I think under. But, yeah, I mean, I think 
that the Lion one is really good. It's definitely <laughs> going to be close. But, I mean, I think the Lakers are in store for a great season. I would not be shocked if they were 2024 NBA champs. But I'm very excited to see. Obviously, Jelani, thanks for coming back on. Slim, it's always here. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Hope I can get back on here again. Absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time, and peace.